Hello NASCAR fans, Chris Durrell here with RotorPros.com, DailyFantasySportsRankings.com, and my own Patreon page, Patreon.com slash JaegerBombs. Hope everyone's having a good Memorial Day weekend. Uh, we've got another NASCAR race today. Brad Kozlowski took home the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte yesterday. Today we've got the Alsco 300 from the Xfinity Series. Qualifying was made by Draw. Um, I do have the sheet up as you can see here. We're going to go over it, some of my favorite plays, as well as I came up with another sheet. It's a NASCAR uh, matrix is pretty much what it is. We're going to go over that here first of all. I'll jump right in right now. Uh, so pretty much what I have here is a list of all the drivers in the race their DraftKings salaries, and their starting position. And then we've got a matrix of all finishing possible finishing positions for each and every driver, giving you what their point total would be in terms of place differential and finishing points. Laps led and fast laps are not factored into this at the moment. So as you can see, um, Kyle Busch starting 18th. If he finishes first, he would get 63 points just from place differential and his finishing points. And then down to a driver like uh, Alex LeBay here, uh, he would get 82 points if he was to win the race. He's starting 37, so he's going to get a lot more place differential. This is a tool that can be used a lot when deciding between uh, maybe drivers in the same zone. The first one that kind of stands out going down a little bit into that mid-range, three drivers that I will have some exposure to today you've got jesse little michael annette and tommy joe martins as you can see here by looking at this michael annette starting ninth is going to have to get ninth to get uh you know where he start where he's starting if he finishes there he's going to get 35 points given that he doesn't lead any laps for these other drivers little and martins who are in the same price range for them to get 35 points because they're starting further back as you can see they're only going to need 22nd uh, 20th to 22nd place finishes so there's a little bit risk there so for me when looking at that data i see martins and little with their place differential more as cash game safer plays they've got a safer floor versus michael annette who's got upside for sure probably going to be a little bit lower owned because he's in there he has been better on the season so his upside is also a little bit better but as you can see his upside if he wins the race and doesn't lead any laps is nowhere near what these other guys are even though he's probably got a better chance at winning the race than those guys but that's kind of how i look at that comparing multiple drivers and what position um, they finish in um, so you can kind of go ahead and say okay well if brett moffitt finishes seventh he's going to get 52 points versus jeffrey earnhardt um, they're starting side by side so that's kind of a bad comparison but you you get it there and then what you can do i've added this today is projected fast laps or projected lap sled so there's 200 laps in this race today so you can kind of go ahead and uh, enter in who you think's going to lead laps so for you to ent uh, edit this yourself what you're going to have to do is go ahead and go up to file make a copy create your own copy which will make it editable for you so i'll just show you how i'm going to go ahead and use it so my early leader in this race is going to be justin allgaier i think he can get it out and probably lead let's say 60 laps kyle bush starting from 18th he's clearly the best car in the field 5,000 more than anyone else i think he can make his way forward fairly early and get up front can probably lead let's say 125 laps so that leaves us 15 laps to kind of fill in um, i think chase briscoe let's just give him those 15 laps so in that scenario there you can kind of it changes the upside for kyle if he wins he's now if he wins leads 125 laps he's in that 94.25 DraftKings point range so that's another way you can use the sheet i definitely recommend going ahead and doing this making your own copy and just going in and playing with some scenarios in terms of who leads so if kyle only leads let's say 50 laps all guyer leads 100 we can clearly see that Allgaier at his price, $7,000, uh, about $6,400 less. If he wins the race, leads 100 laps. Even if Kyle leads 50 laps, um, maybe finishes second, Allgaier is going to be that player there. I mean, that's not a likely scenario, but that's kind of how you can go ahead and use, that sh use this sheet to your advantage. So that's new. This is going to be something that I will distribute. Um, it's going to be added to each and every main sheet for Xfinity and Cup Series. It will be a, a standalone sheet as well if you want to maybe load in um, another site and um, possibly different uh, salaries or something like that. But uh, it will be available moving forward for Xfinity and Cup. Truck Series is still in the works. Um, so there won't be any sheet for that tomorrow, unfortunately. I will be in um, the chats to help you with uh, some possible plays, though. So with that, let's go back and look at the Elsco 300 
sheet here for tonight. Um, the race, I believe, 7.30 p.m. Eastern lock time. That gives us a little over six hours here. So first of all, the first thing you see, like I mentioned on the last sheet, Kyle Busch 17,000 this week. Um, that uh, NASCAR race, the Xfinity race in Darlington, he was around 16 or 16.5, so that price has gone up. But for good reason, he's clearly the best driver in the field. He's the only cup driver in the field. Some of them have cup experience, but he is the only cup regular in the field here. So that kind of gives you that. With my first initial thought was to fade him, maybe even fade playing this slate altogether. After going through it, there is some value plays that I do like. And I think, Kyle, um, you can get him in your lineups quite easily, actually, today. If you feel from 18th, um, the reason you maybe want to get him is because he's starting 18th. He's got easily win potential, which gives him 17 place differential upside right off the bat. And then we know that if he gets up front early, he could definitely dominate uh, in that 100 to 150 laps lead range, which would easily make him the top play in the slate, even from a points per dollar perspective. If you're going away from him, I do like Justin Allgaier. He's the first driver I'm going to drop down to. He is starting fourth, as you can see here. Qualifying is over in column AV. Um, so he's starting fourth. The qualifying for this race was a draw. Uh, same as the first race at Charlotte where they took the drivers and owner points. First to 12th did a draw. 12th to 23rd, 24th, and back, and so on. So Allgaier would be my early... Um, pick for leading some laps until you know Kyle possibly gets up there I think he can be you know his upsides kind of in that 50 60 lap range which if we go and look at the season statistics here you can see that he is second behind Chase Briscoe in laps led he's led 50 plus laps twice already this year I think today tonight could definitely be another chance for him to lead um, finish inside that top five and if that happens like I said, if he goes ahead and leads 60 laps, even if he doesn't win and Kyle wins the race and he finishes, even fifth, he's going to pick up 53 points with 60 laps led. Drop him down to 40 laps led. He's still kind of in that uh, 48 to 50 point range around that fifth place finish. So I definitely like Justin Allgaier today. Noah Gregson, he's number two in the model. He finished fourth here last year, which was awesome. Um, looking at his season stats, he's already got a win. Three top fives in five races, top ten in four of those races, and an average running position of 7.6. He's up there 90 laps led as well, starting tenth. I think he can lead some laps. I don't think he's going to be second in laps led. He's probably in that uh, third or fourth driver um, in terms of dominator points today, but I definitely like him at 9,500. Hard to ignore... Um, Oops. Hard to ignore Alex LeBay here, starting 37th. He gives you that elite place differential upside, and he's one that stood out over on the Matrix. Uh, I don't think he's going to get first by any means, but he could be somewhere even in that 20th place finish range. That's 41 points for him right there. Even back at a 25th, he's looking at 31 points without any laps led or fast laps just from that place differential upside. Kind of that price has kind of got up there, but the reason it is there is because of that starting position and that uh, place differential upside. Then moving down the list a little bit more, um, I like Jeremy Clements here. He's had some success here, 13th. We'll go across and look at the track history. He was 13th in his last year's race, top 20s in three of his last four. And as you can see, top 25s in all but one race here. Um, at Charlotte and he is starting back in the 27th position so I kind of see him with that top 15 upside and with that if we go and look at top 15 even if he gets to 15th that is 41 points without laps led or fast laps 31 points even for a 20th place finish <clears throat> with a plus seven place differential there from 27 so I'm definitely on board with Jeremy Clements in that mid-range as well and then like I talked about before uh, Jesse Little, Michael Annette, Tommy and Joe Martins are all on my list today. Probably Annette's going to be more on the GPP side just because he's starting a little bit more forward, limiting his overall upside, as we can see, um, or his overall safety, I guess you could say, um, as we talked about over here on this sheet. 54 versus Martins and Little. Like, I don't think Martins and Little have that top 10 upside. I'm probably thinking like 20th place finish kind of in there. So 38 and 36 points for a 20th place finish from that mid 7K range is pretty darn good compared to what we need out of a net kind of in that 7th, 8th place finish um, to get those same amount of points. 
And then dropping down some drivers that I'd like from a value perspective today. Um, Dylan Bassett in the 90 car I'm definitely looking at. And the reason why we start looking in the Xfinity series a lot more instead of looking at individual drivers. Sometimes we need to look at what car they are in because they do switch on a week-to-week basis. Some of them aren't full-time drivers. So when you look at these value guys, you really got to start paying attention to that. So last week in Darlington, Alex LeBay was in the 90. He finished 17th in that car, so it did show some good speed. Um, didn't lead any laps or anything like that, but it's a top 20 finish from uh, a car that is a sub 5k price tag. I'm definitely on board with. And then the race before that, we had Dylan Bassett back in that car that was at Phoenix. He finished 18th in the number 90. And then before that was the Fontana race at Auto Club Speedway. Uh, LeBay was 13th. And then just before that, I'm not going to look at Daytona just because it is a super speedway. But at Las Vegas, uh, LeBay again finished 18th in that number 90 car. So it looks like it's got top 20 upside for sure. Um, Again, that is why he is starting uh, 19th. So it kind of does limit that place differential upside. But from a sub 5K price tag, when you're trying to jam in Kyle Busch, I'm definitely on board with Dylan Bassett there. And then Jeff Green's another one. Uh, As you can see, his track history here. And I was just going to look at that real quick um, just to see what cars he has driven here yeah i'm not getting that's just seasoned so i will dig into that here in a little bit post race if you want to ask me questions on that definitely hit me up with jeff green but he is in the 93 car today so looking at that 93 car and its performance last week was myatt snyder he finished 35th um probably yeah he was about a few laps down he had some issues there uh when we look at that 93 car back at phoenix raceway before the break jeff green was in that car he finished 15th so that's really good to see he was on the lead lap there and then going back to fontana uh myatt snyder drove that car to uh, 11th place finish lead lap obviously and then going back to las vegas joy gase was in the car in a 19th place finish so that 93 car and the 90 car definitely look like they've got some speed um i think they're you know they're going to be maybe not finishing on the lead lap per se, but they are going to be finishing. Um, I, I think, like I said, Bassett's definitely got some upside of 15th to 20th. You got Jeff Green starting 20th, so they both don't give you that place differential upside, but I both think they're 15th to 20th place cars in their upside for sure. Maybe even touching that 10th to 12th place, but that would be kind of high end um, for them. But at that price tag, getting those two drivers in sub 5K helps you for sure get to Kyle Busch or four other balanced plays in the 8K and 9K range. So other than those two down here, another one would be uh, Cody Vanderwall. Don't know a whole bunch about Vanderwall. Um, he did race, where are we here? He was 32nd in that 52 car at Darlington, uh, so not great there. He is starting back in 35th, so I mean that would even be okay for that 5600 price tag. He does give you that place differential if that's what you're looking for out of your value plays, um, but that car, that he's only raced that one race, but in that car... He finished, actually, he was in it in Phoenix as well, and he finished 29th. And then we want to look at, yeah, he was 32nd at Darlington, and then going back even further, uh, J.J. Yaley was in that car, finished 25th at Auto Club Speedway, and I believe Yaley was in that car, yes, he was, in Las Vegas and finished 22nd. So maybe his upside is kind of sitting in that 22nd to 25th range uh more like 25th to 30th place cars kind of where i've got him today so 5600 is a really nice value there for him so there's three value plays i'm looking at there's obviously uh more if you want that information um all of my plays which will be updated here shortly after the video definitely hit me up uh in the slack chat for roto pros the slack chat for my patreon or at dfsr.com in our website chat there Thanks for watching the video. Good luck tonight, and let's get some green screens in the Xfinity Series. Be back tomorrow for the Truck Series, and then Wednesday again I will have a sheet. Another video coming out for the uh, NASCAR Cup Series 500-kilometer race on Wednesday. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a good day.